Hi guys, I um, received a request from a client for a quilting motif that um, is gonna be a little bit tricky and I wanted to just make a video because I think this is kind of something that a lot of people aren't are really all that, that familiar with. Um, I've got a, a quilt here that is it just, I made it up, it's fake. But um, let's say that this was a quilt pattern that you did and you wanted something that radiated out from the center. For instance, if you wanted it to, to start in the middle and spiral out like this, all the way out, so on and so on and so on, all the way out from the quilt. That would really be cool. I even um, have a picture of one that was submitted to me. Let me find it. Here's one that somebody submitted to me and said, can you do something like this? And um, yeah, obviously that person, that quilter just started in the middle and sewed lines um, out from the middle every time. And that is a really cool effect, I, I agree. The tricky part is, if you were doing that on a domestic sewing machine, no problem. You you pin your whole quilt sandwich together or somehow baste it. You can baste it with long cotton thread or you can pin it with safety pins. And then you just go to the middle of the quilt, you put your presser foot down and you stitch a straight stitch out. There were probably, I'm assuming this person did some marking to make sure that they did some did straight lines every time. But um, yeah, you go out. The thing that most people don't realize is that on a long arm machine, we quilt from the top to the bottom, at least basically. So if you wanted something that radiated out from the center, I would need to go through and mark the entire thing. So for instance, I've got a fresh one on this side. So I, let's pretend this is your quilt. I'm gonna load it up here on my frame. Here's, there's a roller up here and then there's a roller about 20 inches down here. I load the backing up, I stretch it between the two rollers, I lay the batting on top and then I lay this quilt top on top of that. And when I lay this quilt top on there, I start from the top down and I only have visible access, I only have access to whatever fits on my quilting frame. This is all that I can quilt right now. So you can see that that's problematic. If you wanted me to start down here, was something that radiated outward, like those lines or the, or the curly cue that went all the way out there. I'm quilting here. I have no concept of where the center is here and where the lines need to be out here. So if we were gonna do that curly cue effect over here, I have no idea where the lines were, are gonna need to be out here because I haven't quilted down here yet. Once I quilt this area, it's easy to do something like, um, like here, I'll do orange peel. I'll do orange peel. Gosh, it's hard to write and hold the phone at the same time. So I can do, I can do an orange peel effect. Based off of the grid here that was pieced into the quilt. But everything I do is gonna need to be completed or at least stitched partially one swath at a time. When I say swath, I mean the width of my quilting machine. Um, there are ways that you can, you can secure it, like you can, uh, you can do some stitch in the ditch work or do, do some, some small amount of stitching within each swath of the, of the quilt to secure the, the um, quilt sandwich in place, but you've gotta do it one swath at a time. So now let's pretend I'm quilting. I'm quilting this, I've done that whole area, and then I just advance my quilt. I roll, 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 and the next part that I have access to is this. Here, let me, there's my mail. So now the only part of your quilt that I can see and have access to is this part. So if I was gonna do, you know, a filler in here, like let's do a stipple. Let's pretend that instead of doing the orange peel to this quilt, I was doing a stippling background. I can do this stippling background all around that medallion star in the middle. Okay, now I'm gonna stitch in the ditch up here. And now I'm gonna stitch in the ditch over here. And let's say I wanted to fill this center of the star with circles, okay? or with loops, I'll 
fill this with loops and then I'll go back out and now I'll start filling it with filling this with the stippling again. And now I filled this section. And now I roll, roll, roll my quilts up. And so all of this, everything I've quilted up here has already been rolled onto a roller. Everything that I haven't quilted yet is hanging off the edge of the machine down to the floor. And you'll see, see just now, this is the third swath. I've done probably an hour's worth of work and I'm only just now to the center of what the center of this quilt is, the star is. Right now, I can see the center, but I never was able to see it up here. So if somebody wanted to, to use a, a quilt concept like this, where there's a large center medallion and you want the quilting motif to, to be centered on that medallion and work its way outward or radiate outward, I, it can be done, it can be done much more um, straightforward on a domestic machine. You just put your needle down and you start quilting. It's really a lot more time consuming to do it on a domestic machine, but, it, but it's a much more straightforward process. If you wanted to do this on a long arm machine, I would have to lay the quilt out on the floor or on a large table and mark everything first. I would have to use some sort of an erasable pen, like a water soluble pen or an air soluble pen, probably water soluble because this is gonna be a really time consuming process. If you use an air soluble pen, it'll probably disappear before you ever actually get to start stitching. But yeah, I'm gonna need to use a ruler of some kind, like a re depending on the size of the quilt, a really long ruler. And I may not have a ruler that long, so then I'm, I'm left to like, Oh gosh, I can't do this and hold my phone. I'm left to, yeah, let's pretend my ruler's this long. So I start in the middle, I trace along the edge of the ruler with a, some kind of a soluble pen, and then I have to, and then I have to go down here and finish it. And I've got to decide, am I gonna make these all the same distance apart? Because that's gonna create a different angle in here every time because this isn't exactly a square quilt. So do I connect the dot this way? But I'm gonna to have to mark every single one. I'm gonna flip this upside down and pretend that, pretend that we're starting from scratch. So I'm gonna to have to make every single one of these lines with a pen and a ruler before I ever get to start quilting it. I'm just doing this, imagine me marking your quilt right now with, with like an air, a water soluble marker. And so now, once I've marked the entire quilt, which is gonna take several hours, couple, three, five, six hours, um, then, depending on the size of the quilt, then I get to take the quilt top, load it on my frame, and I start at the top. And, and the quilting is gonna take longer than just kind of a meandering edge to edge idea as well, because I have to start here with my quilting, stop, tie off. Remember, this is all I have access to on my quilting frame. This is all I have access to. And then I'm gonna have to start up here again, come down here, stop, tie off. Start up here again, come down here, stop, tie off. Tie on, quilt down here, stop, tie off. Tie on, quilt down here. And then once I get that section done, you guessed it, I'm gonna roll it forward so that the done part is wrapped around my roller. And now every one of these lines, I'm gonna have to tie on here again, quilt down here, tie off. Tie on here again, quilt down here, tie off. Tie on here again, quilt down here, tie off. Tie on here again, quilt down here, tie off. So you can see even though that's a really simple idea, just radiating lines or these radiating circles, like, yeah, that's super simple, elegant. I, I, I do like the concept, but in practice, carrying it out on a long arm machine is not practical because if you were doing this with your walking foot on a domestic machine, you could do it exactly how I'm drawing it. But if you're gonna be doing this on a long arm machine, hold on, let me just kind of finish this sketch. Imagine, I'm only, I only have access to this part right here when I have this loaded up on my long arm machine. When I start, this is the top of the quilt and I quilt from the top down. So if I hadn't pre-drawn those lines with some kind of an erasable pen, 
I would have no idea where those lines need to be because I don't have the luxury of being able to start in the middle. Hopefully that makes sense. Just something that a lot of people don't realize is that long armors, unlike domestic machine quilters, long armors start at the top and work down. All right, bye.